Well, we finally made it to the end of this terrible, terrible year. But being the end of 2020, that also makes this the perfect occasion to talk about the wheels and technology that have made the most impact. But instead of making just another electric unicycle of the year video, I decided to do something a little bit different this year. We're gonna do an entire award show to talk about the whole electric unicycle industry. Not just the wheel of the year, but also talk about who we think are the best design wheel, the best technology, and the best electric unicycle company of the year. Not only that, I had my friend Mickey, aka EVX, to join in on the discussion. Are you ready for the biggest electric unicycle award show since it's the only one? Road and Troll! As always, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and click on that bell icon to be notified of new episodes and stay till the end for a preview of what's coming up next. There have been so many changes in the in the in our little well no longer a little niche of electric unicycle. I thought that it'd be interesting for us to instead have a whole war show to uh, talk about specific things that we really like. And today it's not just me because I also have Mickey here with me. Hello. Um, so the format is going to be like this. We have a bunch of different categories and I'll bring them up and talk about and, and explain a little bit of what it is. And then uh, both Mickey and I would uh, talk about what are our pick for each of the categories. But first, before we get into it, this video was sponsored by Go Wheels Canada at GoWheels.ca. Mike, who is the guy behind the shop, uh, is a really awesome guy and also a member of the UC Foreign. And I actually had a nice long conversation with him. Um, and he actually had a nice uh, background in retail. And I think there's already some positive review of his shop. Um, so if you're in Canada and is looking for an electric unicycle, check out his shop. I think he actually have a few wheels in stocks. So if you're lucky, you might not even have to go through the long pre-order wait time. Uh huh. So now Sean does not know his way to the Brooklyn Bridge. No, I'm completely lost. <laughs> um, well, you need to find your way to the water over here. Yeah. Follow, follow me. So, you didn't know Sean doesn't live in Brooklyn. <laughs> so he has no idea. I around. come here all the time. I have like a sit route that I usually like to go um, along the waterfront, which is always really nice. So, <laughs> as is the tradition of a proper award show, I'm gonna start out with a with a joke. Um, Make it a good one. So both uh, Mickey and I had fell to really dress up for the occasion. See. We, we have, uh, neither of us have brought our tux. But um, speaking of which, Mickey, what, what is the difference between a guy in a tux as compared to a uh, guy in a spandex on a uh, bicycle? I have no idea. <laughs> well, it's a tire. Get <laughs> it? Oh, groaner. <laughs> Big groaner. Um, I also lost. Wait, which way okay. is it? <laughs> we're going we're gonna to find the Brooklyn Bridge. Yes. Um, so, with that out of the way, painfully, um, we'll get to our first category. The innovation of the year. And that would be the electric unicycle that in our opinion, uh, that had, that represent the, uh, uh, the greatest events that we have seen in electric unicycle in 2020. So, Mickey, what do you think is, uh, is your choice? Well, we have obviously, what, five wheels that came out this year? Oh yes, speak, yes, the nominees would be the current, would be all the electric unicycle released this year. This is a tough one. This is a very tough one because I feel like 
there are actually some very strong differences between some of the wheels. Yes. So those differences really, we're gonna have to cut over here in a second, but those differences really make it a tough call to, to figure out exactly where to go with this. But I think if we're gonna have to go with the most advanced technology in EUC that we've ever seen, something that's pushed the sport further, for me, I think I'm gonna to have to sit with the S18 on that one. It's just so radically different, and it, it was it was the first electric unicycle that got people who aren't really into EUCs fascinated by them. Even my brother-in-law, who thinks this all this stuff is really stupid, he saw it with the suspension on the back, and he went, "Now you're talking." <laughs> yeah, actually. I, I, I agree with you on that. My, my choice is also the SAT because, you know, the suspension is really, in my opinion, the thing that was kind of the largest leap forward with the electric unicycle. It was something that, you know, I always wanted to see, but I actually was very skeptical for the longest time because I didn't really think that any of these smaller companies would have the capability to invest in the amount of research dollars in order to develop something workable like you know like what right. we have and it's actually really amazing that we not only got one but we got three and out of like i i would agree with your choice of the sat because out of like the three different set of wheels it has the most radical suspension system because it's not like the straightforward you know up and down piston that's like kind of the obvious choice uh, instead they went with something that is you know offset which allowed them to use like this off the shelf piston that is right. much more uh, customizable wow. I am kind of surprised that you know I thought that with the with that wheel getting into more hands that people would start you know trying to use different kind of shock but that seems to have not taken off well I think uh yeah, I don't follow the S18 too much on the internet, but to me, I, I would imagine the people who are swapping the shock aren't really posting about it all that much. They're just kind of doing it and living by their own rules, I guess. <laughs> but I think, I think if we're going to dive into this for two seconds, I think the shock they put on is fine. I don't think there's, there's much, uh, unless you have, you know, it's a rare guy who's got deep pockets to spend on an S18 and then upgrade the shock for another two to three hundred dollars, maybe maybe even more. So I think if you were to spend, you know, two hundred dollars as an upgrade for your shock, you probably wouldn't uh, increase much of your experience. You'd have to spend probably closer to five hundred. So I, th I think that that's why we're not seeing a lot of that. I see. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, you're already two thousand dollar in, so it's a uh, it's a little bit more of a reach. But I do have to say, like in regards to pr to the price, I was very surprised at how much people, how many people was willing to kind of make the leap for uh, for the veteran Sherman, considering how expensive that wheel was. So yeah, for sure. For, for the longest time, like the monster at twenty eight hundred dollars, you know, nobody was interested because everyone thought it was just kind of too expensive of a wheel. But I feel like the appetite, you know, every the the, the public's appetite has kind of increased, uh, given the, all the performances and all the variations of wheels that we're seeing. I feel like are we on the bike path side? I never know. Uh, yes, we are. Okay. I'm sure this is going to do wonders for your audio, hearing all this thud, thud, thud. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> this is my favorite bit bridge. This is why I always try to take it, you know, take it well, off in my um, You've taken video. me on my least favorite bridge. Yeah, it's, um, this is the one bridge that all, everyone always complain because there's so many tourists, so, and they always wander onto the bike portion without knowing what's going on. So uh, it, it does get annoying if you have to commute on it regularly. It seems to be much better because we're in COVID times, I guess. Uh, obviously the crowds are a lot less here. So, you know, much, much better experience than like a typical time of year. Right. 
Um, anyhow, moving on to our next categories, we have quite a few to go through, so I want to be a little bit quicker here. Now that we have talked about the wheel that represents the technology events the most, I also want to go to go the other way and kind of talk about reliability because that is one of the things I think people really are interested in, especially for someone new. And electric unicycle had always been you know, one of the more reliable means of uh, personal electric transport just because of how simple they are. So, this is why the second category is the bulletproof wheel of the year. And the nominee would actually include all the wheels in the past as well as the current crop of, uh, of electric unicycle. So what in your opinion is the uh, most reliable electric unicycle that you can buy right now i mean hands down the inmotion v8 <laughs> just kidding um, as far as the wheels that came out this year the the most reliable is the veteran sherman but what if so if i include all the prior wheels that's also have been released would you still say that all, all prior wheels huh yes this is, well, I have to say then that probably, yeah, back to my joke, I think the InMotion V8 or V8F have been the most reliable wheels, I think, that have ever come onto the scene. I think it's mainly because they just have a lot less parts going on and, uh, uh -huh. you know, a very robust shell. Yeah, that, that is the thing about the, I mean, until the advent of all, the whole suspension wheel thing, you know, they electric unicycle are pretty straightforward affairs so oops yikes <laughs> don't worry i didn't hit them have a good day the first award show to have ransom uh, pedestrian over <laughs> off the path <laughs> our, our moving uh bulldozer of a, of a EUC award the the problem right now is i have a selfie stick that's longer than my actual mass <laughs> well, maybe I can use it to my advantage and like... It looks like you're jousting it. the crowd, actually. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> um, so my choice for this is actually the, uh, the Kingsong 18XL. Uh, I actually, you know, only... I never owned that wheel, personally. And I, I have only ridden it a few times. But I do have to say that, you know, based on the conversation I had with a lot of people, uh, who had had that wheel that it's really robust and kind of bulletproof i think initially when they first released it there was like a little bit of who you know thing about the uh the battery size because they they upgraded it you know i think from the 18 uh, l to the xl like within a few months maybe uh, but you know all that issues have been addressed so even though that wheel is a year old and doesn't have all the latest gizmo in it. Uh, for everything I've heard, it's a, it's a really reliable wheel. So, yeah, I used to own that wheel, so I can attest to that. I actually completely forgot about the 18XL, um, but I, I, I still stick with my choice of the V8 because that even the XL had some, some pain points uh, I, I know very well, which was water would get into the light socket and eventually uh -huh. over time would short out the light. Ooh, that's not a good thing. <laughs> uh, but as far as like the wheel performance, it never affected the wheel performance at all. Just the, the lights and, and like the five volt stuff kind of would tend to go if you rode in the rain a little bit. Um, well, that's good hey, to I'm know. Gonna, I'm going to switch my uh, camera's auto highest to like 1600 because okay. I feel like you're getting a dark image. All right. So now that we have talked about the most reliable wheel, it's time to call, talk about our okay. favorite and least exciting subject, yeah. quality control. So the next right. category is the Golden QC Award, and that would go to the company that, in your opinion, did the best with the current crop. That's 2020 of new wheel releases. So I think I, I have an answer for it, but I, I fear um, it, my, my knowledge of how much problems are happening with different wheels. 
uh -huh. how many problems are happening is, is limited because I'm not a dealer of any sort. Uh -huh. I, I, I wish Jace I could phone a friend and call Jason at E-Wheels or, or Rose at Yuko and be like, hey, <laughs> which ones are you getting calls about the most? No, this um, is fine. I mean, you know, we're, 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 you know, we definitely don't know the whole picture. But at the same time, I would say that you and I probably have more exposures because we do talk to dealers, you know, pretty regularly. So we do hear kind of more as well as, you know, we have such an active, you know, community here in New York City. So if something yeah. were to go wrong, you certainly hear um, all about it from um, so the I, very I think, many whiny guys here. <laughs> right. Well, so I think then I'm just going to go with my gut and say that as far as QC goes, I the least amount of problems from, from a wheel ever, I feel like out of these crop, um, has been the veteran Sherman. All right. That is, I, I do have to say, I sort of agree kind of because, you know, based on everything I heard, I also kind of hear the least amount of problems from that wheel, part of the, you know, like, and that, that is kind of part of the reason that wheel is so attractive because I right. felt like they really put a lot of thought into it. But I do have to say, like, for me, I'm going to say that I give the award to no one this year. <laughs> I'm going to be very, very me. But at the same time, I feel like, you know, like it's now that, oops, how do we get around this? You're riding in the wrong direction. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Wait, who did you say you give the award to? I would say that I give the award to no one. So no, there's no winner in my book this year for the Golden QC Award. Because I feel like, you know, if you release like, I, like in the way it should be is, is that, you know, company release a wheel and that it shouldn't have any problem day one. I mean, they, maybe there's a few minor defect that right. you know one or two percent of people experience but my impression is that just about every single wheel releases has gotten way more problem than just that so you right. know as much as i feel as, as i feel like a few company like sherman did better than the others you know what i really wanted you know what i really hope to see is kind of less issues in the future so that you know there's there's not like all this like oh we have this problem now we have to like the other problem is that like when they discover a QC issue they have to now hold back the entire production run to address it so that's the other problem we have is that you know like when they do that there's delay so people put in a pre-order and they wait and wait and wait because the companies are trying to fix things on the fly and yeah. that's, you know, caused another, you know, whole well, slew this, of problems. This comes back to the whole idea that they don't, for whatever reason, have proper um, testing done in China. For whatever, I've just, my, my joke or, or just like, you know, cheeky thing I say is that they, like once a certain company puts together a wheel, once it turns on and like rolls, all they do is just ride it around the backyard and say, okay, pack it up, ship it to America. It is, it is very weird because in some way, they're, they're almost kind of victim to their own success because, you know, I get the sense that the, you know, they, every single one of these company so way more wheels than they had initially projected. The, the problem of, of, of poor, poor kind of QC prior to wheel release, like you said, like the, the thing they really should have done is to have a prototype, have something like, you know, a beta wheel or, or, or you know, whoops, I'm riding right into this guy's path. Um, have like, like a, have like a prototype wheel ready to be written and, you know, again, we'll be happy to do it, but they should do it well ahead of release so they have time to react. To yeah, well, that on that note, like, of course, some, someone like you and I would be happy to test it, but don't, don't get it twisted. They should be doing their own uh, testing and they should have someone that they actually pay money to, to like put their life on the line to test these things. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't want a super prototype, like, you know, 
that's barely functioning. Please don't send me that. I don't, I don't want to be that guy. I want to be the guy that once you have it where you think it's close to being ready for, for production, then send it to us and a lot for like six months of work. You know what I mean? So, so if you're listening guys out there, all you manufacturers, when you think you're like ready to rock and roll and send it to us, call that your six month mark, then send it to us, let us test it out and see where the failure points are, report back to you. You know what I mean? Like just so there's, I, don't, I have no interest in a complete prototype. <laughs> but no, no, I would no, like, no, that I would is like 100% help, right. I, I would like to help with a more real world experience without it delaying your production. Uh huh. Yeah, it's interesting because I think like, you know, that was one thing I noticed that that veteran did pretty well because I really got the sense that they wrote the wheel quite a bit uh, before they actually, you know, sent it out. Um, I remember early on there were some question about whether or not, you know, water would get in from the vent up top. And I remember talking to Linia about it and she was right. just like, she was like, she was very confident. You know, she said, you know, we don't think that's a problem because we have written, you know, for like, you know, many, many like, you know, we have ridden long distance on that wheel in like pouring rain and we didn't see any issues. So, you know, they obviously tested the wheel a good bit and things like that tire, which is, you know, what the, not like the obvious choice because it looks like an off-road tire, but when you ride it, it actually works really well on, on the road. Again, like, I don't, you know, I like, I don't know I, the exact process. I know process. firsthand right now. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm on the Sherman here. So it's just like, I feel like, you know, a lot of these things, electric unicycle is such a new, new thing that a lot of the, like, a lot of the intricacies of what works and what doesn't, like, nobody knows. And the only way that you can kind of figure that out is that if you actually go and try it. Uh, I think we should go this way. Sorry. I completely let you, uh... I went down, down the stairs the there. I felt like I would just show off my nerdness in front of this cool skateboarder. <laughs> so, Sorry, anyway... Your footage is weird. <laughs> no worries. I'm like um, bombing stairs these days. I'm still kind of not, like feeling comfortable doing that man like even with suspension I, I feel like I'm worried that I'm gonna trip or something I mean I took it in my video review of the monster pro I took it down a 12 or 15 stair set oh my god <laughs> so it can handle it but uh it's just not um it's not the most enjoyable experience because you you would think the biggest tire would be the best but you have to kind of like take it a little slow or you'll just clear the entire stair set. So, enough with our uh, whining about QCs. Um, I, the next two category has a little bit more with, to do with the growing uh, EUC community. Um, okay. The first one of which is accessories. So, there has just been an absolute like explosion, it feels like, of different accessory. Before, I remember like in 2009, it was just maybe, you know, like a piece of 3D printed nose guard or, or yeah. what have you for the, for the MSX. But this year, it's just being like, you know, there's pads, there's pedals, there's just all kind of things. So out of all the, and you know, and I mean, we didn't really get to try every single thing. Um, right. uh, uh, in the field, but we did try a good bit of them. So what was your favorite accessory that you had tried and, and why? My favorite accessory? Hmm. Well, I, I have to say really quickly on the history of that note, just because I'm, I think with you, we have to talk about history, right? Um, back in the day, there just used to be a uh, EOC guy. We're going to speed up a bit here because there's a car behind us and we totally can. Um, but back in the day, that guy, EUC guy, whatever that guy's name is in Scandinavia, he was the only one making accessories. So now we've seen such an explosion that every person and their mom who has a 3D printer <laughs> thinks they're an accessory maker. <laughs> and I think uh -huh. I've talked privately to you about how I'm pretty much disgusted with how much accessories there are, or how many. 
uh, you better not be, uh, you know, talking about the, the 3D printed accessory my mom was making. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like everyone thinks that they can make a nose guard now, um, but the irony is um, we only kind of need one that works. That's all we need. Uh huh. But as far as my favorite accessory, I think, um, well, oh, sad day, this guy dropped his package. I, I think it's probably like the Clark pad has been my, my favorite accessory um, as far as like more universal. I'm, I'm, I'm ruining your show here. I'm gonna split it into two, two sections. I think an accessory that I use, because again, like you said, we haven't tried every accessory one that I use every day would be the spike pedals, which I'm riding right now, uh, made by Merlin Fish. Uh -huh. um, those I was resistant to get, but after I slipped off my pedals in the rain one day, I said, ah, let me get them, and I've never looked back. So that's my favorite one that I've used, but I think my favorite one that's more universal to other people uh, would be the Clark pads. Well, it's interesting you say that, because I think I agree with you on the, uh, on the Clark pads. Um, so, I wasn't actually much of a pad user and uh, partly I had to convert because of uh, our friend the, 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 the EX and the Monster Pro. It's two wheels that really sort of requires it because of how heavy of an input you need. So, you know, I got the Clark pads just to ride the EX, but now that I kind of gotten used to it, I really like it quite a bit. And the other thing that I actually found really impressive um, about the whole thing was that how quickly he is iterating on the original ideas. I mean, I mean, it makes sense because, you know, he is using um, 3D printers, so there's really no reason why he can't, you know, quickly come up with different models. But, right. um, well, you know, at find. the same time, it takes a lot of thought to do that. And like it's all, I think it's only been like he only has been selling them for two, three months, and he already have like, you know, version two like out. Well, this is what I find like, uh, just like interesting. I guess is that like, what other industry can somebody um, profit off of their R and D? So basically, I think I think Chris, Chris has a good product. I think it's the same, right, Chris Clark. He's got, he's, he's got a great product, but uh, every iteration he sells. <laughs> so basically, by the time you have the V5, he's made money off of each of those. And I feel like that's like a pretty rare opportunity. Yeah, it works. It, it, it's a really, and also like it's, it's a noticeable, you know, improvement because I had the original like V1 and then I got the V2 and like he made it thinner and he made it like, you know, a little bit more pliant in, in different areas. Uh, and it's like a noticeable improvement. And like, you know, I'm talking to him and he's saying that he's actually talking to, you know, a bunch of different guys. He's like talking to Law, for instance. Right. And he's going to make a pad, you know, that is kind of, you know, along the, along the way that like Law actually configure, configure his like pad setup. So it's really interesting, like, so it's not, you know, so it becomes not just kind of one thing, so it could be different paths to support different kind of riding, so it's, it's really interesting. Yeah, and I have actually, just to say one more thing on the Clark pads, I've found that um, even, even though he has different iterations that he's, you know, come up with, I think the V1 pads are actually really good for certain applications and like the V2 or, or the V3 are better for other applications. Like for example, on the Sherman, I like a really fat pad on the front and the back, just the way I ride. Uh, not too fat, but just a little fatter than like, you're on the V2s right there. They're a little thin. If I had those on my Sherman, I wouldn't be a fan of it. Uh -huh. uh, but I, I was telling uh, my buddy Francisco, who's he's got a Sherman coming, that he might want to use his V1 pads uh -huh. uh, on that, as opposed to the V2. So I think it's, it's like depends on the rider and your the way you ride certain wheels. <laughs> All right, very cool. My next question, my next award, <laughs> I keep getting mixed up, um, is has to do with gears. So there's accessories that we give for our wheels 
And then there is many people's favorite su subject, which is protective gears. So, oh, you what? said gear. I thought you said beer at first. Okay. Beer. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I swear you said beer. I was like, I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe peop if people start making uh, more uh, EUC centric beers, we can have a category uh, next year for that. <laughs> I think, wasn't there somebody who actually like had a beer made in his honor because he, he was riding an EUC and like he like, like helped like a lady or something? I, I, I definitely think I've seen a, a beer label with, with a unicycle on it for sure, but I don't know much about it. <laughs> um, so, gear. So, you know, protective piece of gear, just whichever one that you have used this year that you, you really liked. Um, that you know you, you think made it different to you to your setup well so in my like gear situation if you will I obviously wear a helmet I wear goggles when I'm not required to take them off for a video for Sean um, I wear g gloves I wear knee and shin guards um, so like, there's nothing like new, so to speak, gear-wise to my repertoire this year. I've been using the same things for a while, but I feel like this is good, like this is a this is a long shot here. This is like probably what you were not expecting, but I think the real winner of my gear for this year has been my custom gloves that I made. I kind of took a leap of faith and I was like, you know what? I'm not loving the kind of gloves that are out there, so I made my own custom gloves here, which are weirdly half undone but um, I just took the the wrist guards that e-wheel sends out for free to everybody uh, whatever those are called the more flat ones and I grommeted it to my favorite pair of like moto riding gloves and they also have like a back protection for the so you don't hyper extend so for me this was so amazing it really gave me all the finger protection I wanted in addition to the wrist protection so I don't know if it counts if I make the gear but that's where I'm at <laughs> Well, maybe there's an unrealized business opportunity you're not recognizing, Vicky. <laughs> well, I have spoken to a few glove companies and they are very um, set in their ways and very um, hard-headed, I should say. They, they think they're making the best glove, which, hey, if you're a business person, you should think your product is the best product, right? Um, I, so. I guess so. Do, do they even know what an electric unicycle is? That seems to be what I uh, encounter also. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's like, you know, there's, I, I have issues with other, like I think, I think the Flatlands guys make a, a decent glove. I don't think it's amazing. And I think that um, it's not really safe for electric unicycle riders. I know some guys use them, but at the speeds we're riding at, if I were to eat it hardcore, I don't think the Flatlands are gonna help me too much, so. Uh, I think they have a good glove, but my my specific needs were so specific that I decided to make my own. <laughs> it's um so for me. Let me see. Let me make sure I don't get run over here. Uh, for me, you know, I think like the whole helmet, wrist guard, and, and even like motorcycle jacket is pretty obvious to everybody, and and people oftentimes have that cover. But the thing that I actually like had to look really hard to find was to actually get like um, I'm gonna head that way because wait is this going okay this is better yeah um, we're going up we're going uptown here so yeah this no 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 really because bumpy street too yeah before it was like before the sun was kind of unobstructed so now it's uh it's blocked that makes the light a little bit better oh, am I gonna get run over um, so the thing that I really wanted to find is actually good like chest and rib protector and that's really rare because a lot of the motorcycle jacket like they, it's not part of you know it's hard to make chest protector because there's a zipper down the front of a jacket and that usually gets in the way of you putting a piece of armor in that, in that place and also for like motorcycle riders you know, they hold on to their bike. So the thing, like they have the bike between then and the road, and that provides a little bit of shielding. So like usually when they fall, they fall sideways. 
So, and since gears are not really made for us, it's hard to find that thing. And like, it took me a while, but I found this, you know, what you have uh, referred to as my brassiere, <laughs> which yeah. is uh, a force feel uh, grip protector. Uh, it's basically just a piece of ar armor that you wear like a, like a short vest. And it's super convenient because you can wear it underneath whatever you know jacket you like and it'll still give you protections. The right. only problem is that uh, Force Feel is kind of a pretty eccentric uh, British company and uh, they had not responded to any request. I uh, actually had asked my friend Afiz to see whether or not he would have a better time because maybe they will actually uh, be able they, they didn't understand my american accent english <laughs> so, <laughs> but um yeah so this is this is one area i feel like you know that needs a little bit more development um yeah i, th I even i even think like let's just do it uh like i i now uh wear uh, a lazy rolling jacket and i think that that also has actually helped in a lot of ways when I'm not even thinking about it. Like there's just been times when I've had little crashes here or there or whatever. I'm trying something new on a prototype unicycle and uh, lazy rolling it has come through. It's, it's something that I normally didn't wear in the past. I wasn't really into like a padded armor thing. I, I try to be as minimalistic as possible. It's a little tough the, the, the faster you ride <laughs> to be that minimalistic, but um, yeah, I, I think that uh, that's been, I guess, my other go-to. I don't, I'm not wearing it today. I don't wear it every day, but especially like when we're playing polo, I love wearing my lazy rolling jacket there because it's easy to just like run over the ball and fall on your side, and that protection has really helped me. It is a really nice jacket because uh, the thing that I actually like the most about it is the a lot, like it has a lot of reflective material, so. It's like every time I ride at night, I always wear it because you're like super visible when you have that jacket on. So aside from, you know, it's nice to have one jacket that had all the armor right. pieces built in. So, so that is the halfway point of our award show. And uh, for the second half, we're going to really get to the, the uh, more exciting stuff. And then, of course, the official announcement of what we think is the best electric unicycle of 2020. So, for, so for our second half of the uh, 2020 EUC award, of course we have to start with a joke. <laughs> As oh, if the no. first one was in even the cars are, are, are angry because of my suggestion for another cheesy joke. <laughs> wow, that cop was just trying to hit me. I don't so, know if you're keeping this part in your show, but it's fascinating for sure. <laughs> um, so, Mickey, uh, I like to ride an electric unicycle to work instead of riding my uh, bicycle. Do you know why? because you're fat and lazy <laughs> because if i were to ride my bicycle to work i'd be too tired <laughs> all right quick oh, say boy. something so we can cut to you <laughs> for our next categories we're going to talk about the electric unicycle companies themselves this is going to be a big one so and the nominees are, obviously, we only have four EUC companies and they are all in it. And that would be Gotway, Kingsong, Emotion, and Veteran. Who do you think is the EUC company of the year of 2020? Huh. <laughs> it's so vague. Oh, by the way, you should capture this on camera. You see the lion over there? Look at that lion with the wet mask on. That's fun. Um, this one is sad. okay because it apparently doesn't like it. <laughs> uh, so the, the best EUC company of the year. Can I you would give well, me 
So I would I would kind of expand on that a little bit and just say like the company that you think that did the best, you know, and it, and you could kind of be a little bit open with interpretation as to why you think the company did the best. You know, it could be that they pushed the technology the most, that they did the best customer service, or that they just kind of, you know, did the best as, as, a, as a company. Well, I, I think I'm gonna have to give it to InMotion. I think InMotion as a company did some things this year that has less to do with their wheel and more to do with how they function in the community. I think they, um, they listened to what we all had to say, what we wanted out of wheels, and even when they put their wheel into market, when there was issues with it, or maybe there's just better ways to improve it, I feel like they listened and, and tried to improve the V11. Now, they might hate me for saying this, I do think that they ruined the V11 with the final production model. I think, I think it could have been a little bit better if it was closer to the pre-production, but that's just my personal opinion. But I do think they get, for me, they win the award because they are actually listening to us. And before, you know, we all used to say that these companies don't care about us. They don't listen to what we have to say, the way we ride, you know, what our preferences are. They just kind of do what they're going to do. And for the first time ever, we kind of, at least myself, I felt like InMotion was really trying to listen and act a little bit more like a Western company who cares about their customers. And I am so thankful for that. Yeah, well, I agree with you on that 100%. I feel like out of all the different companies, like Emotion have been the most mature, you know, in regards to like providing services. I mean, they had, you know, just as many issues with wheel releases and delay and so on. But at the same time, I feel like, you know, they were very open and transparent and the communication had always been really good. Like it really, felt like they were you know not only like not, they weren't just acting like they were listening they were like actually listening like even when it comes to you know the changes they made to the final version and like you i don't agree with some of the changes but those were the things that you know that they heard as a feedback and they took it seriously and they they made changes based on that so i can't fault them for it and then you know on top of that even when it comes to like product development like they you know are doing a lot like you know Liam went on the interview with Cobra and talked about you know what they're thinking of making next like for the longest time they were kind of they had a very specific idea of what electric unicycle needs to be they refused to make any wheel that are faster but like you know for for the like for this year I feel like they completely changed it you know they're like okay this is what our customer want this is how they ride we're going to respond to that. We're going to make things that they want, you know? And they like, there was a questionnaire that he passed around on um, what it is that people want, you know? And it's, it's all really positive thing that they're doing. And I feel like, you know, there, there are companies that, that, that take this attitude of, oh, you know, we're like geniuses and we make this awesome product. And what it is that we make, you know, you, 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 you can either, you know, like it and buy it or you can, you know, take the highway or something and I, I don't think that's the right thing to do especially you know with EUCs yeah I think even down to um, it, it may feel a little juvenile but even the fact that they did a Facebook poll on how people wanted the um, the battery curve to function when you get to the low end of the battery I mean that's just wild the fact that they did a Facebook poll to see okay do you want it to function this way where when you get down to 20% battery you just are like forced into some like super low end mode where you can't go very fast as soon as you smack into 20% but what that would give you is a lot of higher speed the majority of the battery or do you want a curve that brings you down gradually and then it's a little bit more aggressive at the bottom end and I'm pretty sure that it was inconclusive so I think the way they went was in the in the actual application itself you can choose for yourself which one you'd want so that that was interesting right the customizability and you know it's like they it, it's what people wanted and they kind of did the thing that was requested that was very refreshing and the other thing that you know i remember that actually made an impression was when they were thinking about making like the hex pedal uh, yeah. which was 
you know, it's very similar to the Hextech pedal from Russia. And at the time when they make that suggestion on the chat, you know, the Hextech guys was like, oh, this is, this is our thing. You guys are copying our work. But like, they didn't leave it at that. Like, I think Emotion actually reached out to them and they worked out a deal so that, you know, Emotion is licensing their work. They're not just kind of taking it. Um, and to me, that's a sign of, you know, maturity. And there is another company that shall remain unnamed that is also releasing their own hex, you know, like pedals. And they didn't, and I, and I asked the Russians, I was like, did, did they talk to you? They're like, nope, <laughs> they didn't say, they didn't tell us anything and ignore <laughs> all of our effort to reach out to them. So it's, uh, it's two different, and it's just like, you know, I, I, not, I mean, it, those kind of things don't make any differences to the end user, like the consumer, like us, in, in right. you know, in, in kind of a regular ways. But at the same time, I feel like it kind of talks about how the company approach a problem. And I feel like the thing I appreciate about emotions that they're not treating like electric unicycle as this thing that's like a fad that is going to come and go. They're really like investing. They're really kind of, you know, approaching it maturely and they're really looking to the future on what they can do, you know, to, to come up with new product and help the, help our little I mean, niche grow. The, the, the fact that they had an Apple-esque keynote to announce the V11 was crazy. I mean, it was a little, you know, lackluster compared to an actual Apple keynote, <laughs> but... Yeah, uh, but like, like the, at the same time, their CEO made an attempt to like, speak in yes. English. That was very impressive. I mean, you know, none was, of the... We don't even know who the mind. CEO are for the other companies. Like, they, they just don't have a presence. I feel like, you know, the guy made an effort to want to reach out and connect. And that was, you know, that was a huge for him. The next category is my favorite subject, which is design. So what do you think is the electric unicycle that was released this year and that had the nice, nicest design? Oh, that's an easy one. I think we all probably agree. Oh my gosh, there's a Sour Patch Kids store. I'm in heaven. <laughs> sorry. You're in a very candy mood. New York is such a great place. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to delay that, but the answer for me is clearly the King Song F-18. <laughs> that is undisputably the greatest design choice uh, of any unicycle ever. And as you said before, it got so many people interested in this sport who never would have looked twice at it. Yeah, you know, I really kind of wrestle with this one a little bit because I do agree that the S18 had a really striking like look like design. Like you look at it, it's one of the most like recognizable and dis like distinctive. You know, you ride down the street with it, everyone will like look at it and be like, what the heck is that? But right. I have to, at the same time, I gotta go the other way. I'm gonna say that I like the design on the V11 better for a few reasons. Because, you know, for one thing, the general kind of, like the little detail, the, like that, that wheel is just much more like nuanced when it comes to the detailing. And also um, the thing that's actually, um, I like the most about it is that I think the way that wheel look, the wheel it's design, is appropriate given what it's meant to be, which is, you know, right. the best thing you can do on that wheel is that it's a great commuter. Riding that wheel like to work, you know, is, is really great. Like that, that is a wheel I feel like I can roll to work and feel like it's appropriate. You know, has good it range. Feels, it it has, feels like a, a Japanese businessman would be right at home standing on that thing. Right, exactly. And like it has refinement. And, and I think that's the thing that is noticeable. You look at that wheel, you feel like it's, it's a wheel where everyone spent a lot of time and thought about like the very many details. Like the little things, like, you know, a kickstand. Like it's such an obvious improvement right. to electric unicycle, but for whatever reason, none of the other company had ever done it. Can we go? Yeah. Yes. Well, it's like, you know, we had all the third party accessory uh, people creating kickstands for the longest time. Right. And it's just like, you know, and then like it has a really nice headlight, even like the ding, like when you turn it on, when it go like 
like the sound it makes makes me happy to use it because I feel like it just has like a level of polish that I didn't get with any of the other wheel. And as striking yeah. as like the, the, the S18 was, I feel like it's missing a little bit of that. And also the fact that like the S18 is a great off-road wheel and it kind of doesn't look like an off-road wheel. So there's a little bit of disconnect between its design and well, this you know, is what the it looked like. Saw. That's what we saw this year, right? It was like everyone created a wheel that looked like it was for the other thing. Right. So, I, you know, I at the same time, I got to say like the wheel like this year, like it's, it's like night and day as compared to like 2019. Like the releases that we saw in 2019, which is the Nikola and the 16X, like they, they don't look bad. They look nice, they look fine, but like there's, there's nothing that really make them kind of special. There isn't that kind of, you know, thing that make you go, wow. Uh, they were just kind of competent, you know, clean, simple things. And this year, man, like every single wheel, there's so many, like they went in so many different directions. Even like the Sherman, it has its own very distinctive look. Now that we're, we're through with the, uh, with the uh, fun and, 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 and decorative side of things, um, let's, let's talk about the, the, our main uh, thing. What, in your opinion, is the electric unicycle of the year of 2020? Man, I feel like we're in such a weird part of town to make this announcement. <laughs> this is like, looks like we're in like the worst little uh, patch of land here. We, it's so cut up here. <laughs> um, but the, the best electric unicycle of 2020. Yes, this is it. This is the big one. Do I have to pick? Do I have to? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, well, if, if I have to pick the best wheel of 2020, but I, I'll just, I'll lead up to it here, which is like, there's a lot of things that go into making a unicycle. And there's a lot of things that I'm sure they all think about. There's a lot of things that the consumer thinks about. But for my money, there's one wheel that feels like the, the manufacturer thought about all of the other little things that made wheels a problem in the past. And they tried their hardest to address it in their own way to make it what they felt to be the best. And you may agree or disagree if they, if they nailed it, but I think that they came the farthest and that would be the veteran Sherman. <laughs> I almost feel like there is very, you're not going to get any disagreement from anyone just because like far and away it was the wheel that like made such an impact on electric unicycle. There, you know, I, I bump, like I talked to people that didn't know about EUC before the Sherman and got into the EUC just so that they could ride the Sherman. It's just a really, really extraordinary, like successful wheel for, and it's amazing to think that, you know, this was the very first wheel that Veteran had ever released. And <laughs> I, I, I totally ran that light right in front of the two cops. Yeah, you did. I, I, I waited. <laughs> It's, it's I, actions like these are gonna get us banned. <laughs> My irresponsible behaviors. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's 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 you know I I still remember when I you know when I first and being you know lucky enough to be the first to actually you know receive and open up the wheel. Like at the time, I was a little bit skeptical. I mean, there was a little bit of buzz about, a, about the Sherman already, but at the same time, this was a new company, you know, who have no prior experience, you know, producing a wheel. So, you know, so I was skeptical, like how, you know, would they be able to really pull off this wheel? And also the fact that it had a price tag that is really high, $2,800. Like I said, the only other right. wheel that cost that much before was the Monster. And that was a very niche wheel. Not a lot of people had the Monster because of the, you know, its size, but also because of its price. But like, I remember when I first opened up that wheel to put the battery in, 
And the, and the thing that actually I noticed was that like on the side panels, they have a, they had a very sort of similar design as the, uh, as the Gotway wheels, except all the screws are just one size larger. I mean, this is the thing that kind of annoy me for the longest time because you have these really super high performance machines, you know, that does like 50 miles an hour. But when you take it apart, it has these tiny screws that is typically used on like a watch. So it's like, this is, this is like, you know, like the thing that I feel like it's a problem. They, they, they should know and recognize it being a problem, but nobody kind of did anything about it. But veteran, like the guy kind of just thought about it. Whoever designed that wheel, like thought about every single little thing and they like did something about it. And that was the thing that kind of really impressed me about that wheel. And also the fact that you can tell that they really test wrote that thing, you know, a whole lot to make sure that it worked and it was balanced and all of that. Right, I mean, the performance on that wheel was what drew me to it. I was looking to upgrade to a high performance wheel beyond my Nikola and that wheel came out and it, from day one, I had a gut feeling that this was gonna be it. This was gonna be the, the wheel that sort of changed things. And I feel like it really, it did that. It's, it's, it's an interesting thing that happened though because the veteran Sherman, as much as we're gushing about it here, you have to be honest and say that it tackled two things at the same time that normally you couldn't see done. I, I at least I think, which is comfort and um, insane specs. Like no one who gets on the Sherman goes, oh, it's fast, it's amazing, but uh, I, I can't ride it long distance. No, 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 no. This wheel is great for long distance, short distance, for extreme aggressive fast riding or slow cruising. As you've seen on this video, I've been sitting for part of this here and there. And dude, this thing is like a really great all around wheel, which I think also makes people who are new to the sport want to buy it. And I always caveat and say, uh, please do not buy this as your first wheel. As much as we're selling it right now, I think it's an awful first wheel. Once you learn and understand the mechanics of, of a unicycle, I think then it's a suitable upgrade, but go buy yourself a beat up wheel and learn first. Get a, get like a thousand miles under your belt on a beat up wheel. Then come to the shining glory that is the veteran Sherman. <laughs> it, it, it's weird because, you know, again, like for the longest time, people are so used to the idea that if you want a performance wheel, if you want something fast, then, you know, you have to deal with all the issues of having to you know, do your own repair, deal with like the, you know, wheels that often have problems, like, you know, like, like just all the, like all the issues that you get from having a, a, a Gotway wheels. Like you have to frequently, you know, do your maintenance and check on the wheel to make sure that, you know, there's no problem with any of the seals, that, you know, the axle isn't loose. You know, there's all these little things that you have to do. Whoops to make sure that the wheel is, is functioned properly. And to get a wheel that, you know, seems to actually finally address all this problem was, was huge for like, for all the, all the people that ride. Like, at least to me, like, I feel like, oh, it's, it's, it's a recognition that they, they saw the same problem and that they were willing to do something about it. As compared to for the longest time, Gotway was just like, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll give you a bigger motor, we'll give you more batteries, but it's just like, but still, like, the case is still bad. Why, why don't you do something about it, you know? Right, right, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it comes back to what we were saying before about that it seems like in the past, they didn't really listen to what we had to say. Uh, uh, I think which way we'll should we be go? Able... We I guess we could path. just keep going. Yeah, yeah, the sun is low enough. All right, there you go. Oh, look, a guy on the famous Z10. <laughs> the wheel I call the fire wheel. <laughs> Why, wow, the Z10 is a wonderful wheel. It's still one of my favorites. <laughs> Uh, I think you pretty clearly laid out in the podcast why it's not wonderful. You had to ride with a stance that was one leg hugged against it and the other leg completely loose. 
<laughs> motor it, wires were burning up. It may be the person that I had today. So, so you're I admitting it was an abusive wheel to you. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes your parents are, you know, you don't, you don't get to choose who your parents are, but you learn to love them just the same. <laughs> um, so, I mean, you know, it, it, was a, it was a really like a combination, I think, of factors. I mean, I actually just as surprised, you know, about it, even though it's a good wheel, I just never really thought that it would take off the way it did. Of right. how it kind of, I mean, that, it, that wheel literally gone viral with the amount of attention that it got. And I think it's an awesome thing, but you know, and, and congratulations to Veteran for having such a hit on their first try. But I gotta say, man, they got a tough job, but because for them to be able to come up with something that would even come close to match the expectation people have now of them of what they would do next is not going to be an easy task. Well, I think I think you're right, in, but I also want to remind people that here's what I think Veteran has to do for the second wheel. I think for their second wheel, Veteran has to make something robust um, and able to handle what whatever you want to put it through, but it doesn't actually have to be just as fast, right? I think that a lot of us are hoping Veteran comes out with a really good 14 or 16 inch wheel if we're honest it'll likely be a 16 um, if they do try to go that small and I, I think it, if it is robust similar to this one so it, maybe there's not a roll bar but but it, there should be some sort of robust quality about the plastic or whatever all the little parts they're using should be able to hold up to a, a good beating and just be a comfortable wheel one that just functions right like there's plenty of smaller wheels in the past we've seen from other companies that the other trade-off with having a smaller wheel is like less power and i'm not just talking about the speed i just mean the actual power inside of it to handle what you put it through i think only gotway obviously has made smaller wheels that are pretty robust and powerful i wouldn't say that they'll handle a crash very well <laughs> but well, that's what i think that veteran has to do I give mean, us a robust powerful wheel that can stand up to a beating and uh, not explode on impact. I, I love the robot and I honestly think that every single electric unicycle that's ever released from now on should have a set of robot like that because I mean dropping a wheel is, is a regular occurrence and for right. you know for you to crack your case every time you know when you drop your case it, it's a terrible thing. And even like at a so slow speed drop, it's still like really rough if you don't have a set of robot. It just seems like it's something that, you know, isn't really that difficult to design into a wheel. And the other thing, I mean, there's so much thing you can do with it, you know, like especially in the motorcycle world, like they, they all have like an internal framework. Like it's not even something that, that had to be on the outside because the other thing that, you know, Frank does is that it gives you more rigidity you know, to the entire, like, give the wheel a little bit more structure. So you could still have, like, a nice looking wheel that has, like, a frame underneath. So I think it's like that, that... Wow, somebody wants to So hurt. I think that is, that is actually one thing that the Sherman did that, that, that was really, really good. Um, you know, I remember thinking about, like, how awesome it would be. Like, I even, like, contemplated um, if I can make like a, a, a frame like the way Sherman has for a wheel, you know, just to protect the company. <laughs> well, that's so you're touching on a, a sore subject for me. There are guys now trying to create these like really bad knockoff roll bars for their unicycles, and the fact because of the fact that it's a knockoff and you're making a third party, the roll bar works on this thing because it's integrated into the shell as well. So, I anyone who's coming out with a roll bar i'm like already laughing at it's like you're just being a copycat and doing the same old nonsense we've seen <laughs> in this industry in the past so maybe well, someone else can come out with a roll bar and it works but these, these like third party ones like make me laugh it, it, it's it's not an easy thing to do but at the same time i want it so badly on, on all the wheels i have i'm like 
I'm willing to <laughs> do the experiment. So just because it's, you know, again, I think it's such a good idea. But anyhow, I think we, you know, we, 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 we cover a lot of ground. And, and again, like, I don't think the actual selection is of any surprise to anyone who has been, in, you know, in the riding at EUC. So, but, you know, it's been an awesome, awesome, like, year. This year, the amount of, like, new wheels we got, I mean, the new companies that, that joined the scenes and the advances in technology, I just want to say that this just has been and like an awesome year for electric years like what by the way when did you start like doing like you see youtube like videos anyway um last year last uh september september so you yeah. also kind of like your channel like also saw a lot of growth this year as well right i feel yeah, like I, this I, year I, there's so many more like people who are making videos yeah, I, I just started last September of 2019, um, and I basically said, I'm going to just give this thing a year, see how it goes, um, and reassess at the year mark. I'm basically past the year mark, um, and I'm still reassessing what to do. <laughs> um, just sort of just letting the train take me for right now, but yeah, it's been about a year. Reassessing? Come on! I think you're doing very well now. You, you, you wouldn't even consider the possibility of stopping, right? Uh, who knows? I don't know. I, I might have to bow down and leave the throne to Sean. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's all like, you know, th this is the thing that kind of, you know, excite me. Like, not just the growth in getting more wheels, but also seeing like the growth in, in the communities. You know, again, like I have said before, I mean, before it was, you know, I see it, you know, the group here in New York, I see the group in Europe, Russia, but now like I'm really, you know, seeing like group from places I never would expect, like Brazil, Philippines, and, right. you know, <laughs> so it's, it's really, really awesome to hear from people from those countries. And it's just been an awesome year. That's been my favorite part. It's like meeting people from across the globe who have very different ride experiences and just terrain and just getting to meet all these different people via my channel. So that's been a very big upshot, like really nice thing about it is meeting all that. And I feel very blessed that I've been able to try every single one of the new wheels that's come out this year. So that's like, I don't think I would have done that had I not had this channel. All right. So, all right. So that's pretty much it. I just want to thank you again for coming out and ride with me. So, <laughs> yeah, man. Would... Once again, I want to shout out and thank EVX for helping me on, on this really long recording <laughs> and suffering through my terrible jokes check out his youtube channel for awesome electric unicycle videos and i'm still totally jealous of all the awesome drum shot he has of new york city oh man look at the time it's a record i somehow managed to waste a whole hour and 15 minutes of your life but i hope you enjoyed it let me know in the comment section below if you agree or disagree with our choices and shout out to my supporter on patreon please check out the link in the video description if you enjoy and like to support my work and as always as much as we all love electric unicycle the only way for us to get better wheels is to grow as a community so tell your friends and teach them how to ride and get them hooked Next episode, my review of the Monster Pro.